Monday. I'm about to get ready to go through to Pixel Up, which is a design conference um, in Mulder's Drift. So yeah, time to get dressed. Cool. Uh, let's hit the road. Quick cup of tea before I hit the road. design stuff like that and then they have a workshop with uh, two or three of the speakers this year um, we've decided to go and see uh, have the workshop with Ethan Marcott who's the guy who invented uh, responsive web design so yeah very excited for the day um, it's usually a good time to connect with other people in the industry. I'll be speaking tomorrow just very quickly, uh, like a, I think like a lightning something or a quick fire or something, but it's literally 15 minutes where I will get to talk to the crowd as part of our sponsorship of the event. We'll see the craziest traffic you've ever seen. And, uh, the reason why I'm pointing this out is that I specifically live five minutes away from work to avoid just this. I cannot stand bumper to bumper traffic. It drives me crazy. Just got to the venue and thankfully I'm not the first one here, but I am pretty early. Um, it's now uh, 10 past seven and the breakfast is served at eight. But hey, let me go walk around. Nothing better than being in uh, out in the country and having this fresh air. Yes, let's get the show on the road. So day one of Pixel Up was pretty great. Um, the the line of the speakers are very focused on business, business of design. There was a lot more of that than anything else. I think it was only Jeremy Key, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, Jeremy, Jeremy Key was the only one who really spoke about development, which was a really, really great talk um, on the layers of the web and a really different way of looking at how we develop and how we think about um, different languages and different um, technology used on the web. But there were some really great speakers. Um, and so the first was Lisa Welshman. And she spoke about the governance of design and how she had some great music examples of you know, how people riff together and then how kind of bands formed together and orchestras and things like that and how there's a common goal and a common is it sheet music that everybody plays to and so on which to me meant we set a vision and then we um, all align to that and instead of this hierarchy of um, somebody at the top and then filtering down and you get this Christmas tree effect in fact 
Yes, there is some sort of leadership in all of that and some sort of kind of structure, but that doesn't mean that's how you work. You don't work for a boss. You align to the leader and the vision and you kind of play a piece of music together. So you work together. Today is the 29th anniversary of the World Wide Web. Then uh, there was a really great guy named Dean Broadley who he's one he's at one of the other banks and he gave some pretty interesting um, kind of input that really resonated with me because I have a lot of the same kind of challenges within my own organization and his talk was uh, so you think you're a Jonathan Corman, he was quite funny. He, he, uh, he, he's obviously hung around with a lot of developers because he's learned to kind of have that very dry, kind of sharp uh, humor. And, uh, you know, he did something quite in, in the middle. He, he, he said that, you know, he asked a question and then he said, well, I'll take silence as consent. And uh, yeah, just, just a little, like things like that I, I really liked. Um, this is a guy who's been in software for a really long time. And I mean, he showed us stuff where he had designed Outlook, you know, and, and contributed to that. And I mean, that's pretty impressive. Um, so his talk was skills for a f Check that. fruitful user experience design career. Hence, user experience design. <laughs> um, after a really cool lunch, um, there was supposed to be Michelle Morrison, but there was actually a lovely lady named Lola Oyalea. I hope I got that right. Uh, and she spoke about wicked problems. And when she started, I thought, nah, you know, I don't live my life for you. I don't focus on politics. I don't focus on um, kind of this negative stuff, you know, crime, politics finance, all this stuff, it like really, it gets me down. So I was a little bit skeptical and then she turned it around into design and spoke about that a wicked problem are the problems that we kind of inherit and we can't really change. It's kind of just the way things are. Some, a quick example would be um, legacy systems. You, you, you can't change that, you know, that, that's really, as a designer, probably out of your control. What we now know in 2018 to be quite poor maintenance practice. So unfortunately, these initial large established companies had a habit of selling you black box software and then making extra money by selling you people to help manage that software. But what it actually meant is that there was nobody within companies themselves who developed a maintenance process that was appropriate. And so over time, stuff just broke. Somebody hacked a fix. Nobody knew where it broke, how it was fixed, and therefore don't know how big a problem it's going to be for the next person. Then um, Farai, the host of Pixel Up, he gave a really good talk. And I mean, you know, he's, he's like myself. This is why I've always liked Farai. And he's very honest. And um, he, he knows how to contextualize things. And he uses the word motherfucker. And who doesn't like to use the word motherfucker? The last talk of the day was Jeremy Keith, who, you know, as I said, he was fantastic. And the first real talk about the practical side of kind of doing and making and things like that. Everything else was kind of very business and whole thing. Um, you know, Jeremy, he, he did this great talk that spoke to, you know, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and a whole bunch of kind of words that like I was jotting down and I definitely have to go and look up um, but it sounds like the, you know he's playing with some really interesting stuff where you don't actually have to uh, be connected to be able to have access to the information kind of like caching but a little bit beyond that
in the present, and sometimes it feels like we are living in the science fiction future, right? That, that, that it has arrived, it's here, and it's kind of overwhelming, right? All this stuff, it's like self-driving cars, drones, AI, AR, VR, the blockchain, right? It's like, <laughs> it's all coming at us all the time. And it's, it's the future, it's here, but like, what kind of future are we living in here? Is this a utopia, is it a dystopia? I like to share lots of different kinds of ideas, but also, I think it's important to recognize that even seasoned professionals get nervous about doing the thing. If you have spoken to me today, there's a likelihood that I've asked you why you haven't spoken on stage yet. <laughs> and everybody says they're nervous about doing a thing. Part of the reason we're doing this is also to show that even if you've been doing this for a while, you can be nervous about the thing and still get up and do the thing. Right? So I just wanted to share that little tip. Sorry, I hope you don't mind. No, no, I just don't. 100% what you said. Get up there and talk. It's not like everyone gets nervous. Yeah. Everyone gets nervous. Absolutely. The first was really great. Um, we did get like a goodie bag, and uh, I will do kind of a proper, I guess, unboxing uh, video of that as a separate video. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, leave a comment, and stay cool.